Okay, in this section, we'll talk about the edge. If you remember, we talked about the ran and the edge and the orchestrator, right? So we're now talking about the edge, which is essentially a cloud native uh, network operating system with all the services running on microservices, both for control and the user slash data plane. So on the edge, in an effort to simplify the scale, uh, uh, scaling and uh, different platform deployments, we also uh, ensure the reservation of the data path, compute and memory resources for all functions uh, that are deployed and it can easily scale horizontally. So we have implemented this Salona Edge as Kubernetes framework based microservices that can run on any hardware platform Again, it can be a VM, bare metal, AWS, Azure Edge, all of those. And this cloud native software implementation also enables seamless upgrade of the Edge as the resource requirements increase over time. And uh, we also interface uh, with this framework, with this massive development ecosystem, right, instead of having any proprietary solution. So one of the main functions that run on the Salona Edge is the LTE and the 5G core, which is both for the control and user plane. And I just want to highlight a few things there. For the core, we basically broke down the 3GPP defined LTE EPC and the 5G, 5G next generation standalone core into microservices. So this is essentially a stateless network function, which enables fully redundant and resilient network deployment. So if a process dies on a specific hardware for any reason, we can spin another instant, uh, instance of that process immediately, right? So that's the stateless operation. And then we went beyond the standard COPS architecture in 3GBP. And we, this is where we separate uh, not only the control and user plane, but instead we can create an instance of the uh, core per device group or application or as micro slices come, that will hopefully become more obvious. So Selena Edge also enables full integration with the existing enterprise network. For example, device groups and application flows on the cellular wireless are translated to existing LAN, uh, VLAN, VXLAN, or ACL systems. SIM identity on the devices are assigned to specific roles within the network via existing AAA and policy infrastructure. Um, the traffic flow within the L2, L3 switching and routing infrastructure takes place just like it does for existing Wi-Fi and internet connected devices. So um, hopefully all of these uh, make sense. If there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll move on to this very exciting concept uh, of micro slicing. So this is one of our real innovation uh, that we are sharing with you, which we believe is very different than anything out there today. So we call this micro slicing and with our micro slicing feature, we enable end-to-end -end QoS for different applications running in the network. With micro slicing, our customers can enforce strict SLAs on the radio resources. They can have dedicated network resources on the edge and they can have KPI level monitoring at the orchestrator. So essentially we have a very granular approach to the 5G network slicing concept and our end-to-end -end solution creates micro slices for different applications in the enterprise network. Through this micro slicing, each individual app on a specific device or device groups can be assigned a guaranteed SLA in terms of latency, jitter, packet error rate and throughput. For example, you can have IP cameras with a guaranteed bandwidth of five megabits per second uplink, or you can have automated guided vehicles with a guaranteed end-to-end -end latency of let's say 40 milliseconds for remote control applications. And all of these SLA requirements are translated into real-time compute, memory, and data path enforcement on the Salona edge, which creates, uh, you know, isolating the data path for different flows. And Salona Orchestrator allows the individual KPI uh, management. It ensures overall availability and reliability of these individual micro slices to, to achieve these guaranteed SLAs to whole, uh, so that the whole network automation is uh, achieved. 
So a, a question for you, Mama. The, um, the notion of video cameras is intriguing. Do you anticipate CBRS equipped video cameras or do you see, you know, the Solona AP is um, somehow talking to a gateway that then provides ethernet to the video camera? Or what do you, you know, I know it's a down in the weeds question for deployment, yeah. but what do you envision when you present something like this? Yeah, very relevant question. And I see JR smiling because he's been doing lots of IP cameras. Um, the, the typical uh, model that we have been seeing so far, Lee, is basically some kind of gateway connected to an IP camera. And there are a lot of gateways out there from Sierra Virus, Cradle Point, that can connect to multiple cameras. And uh, they, then this gateway has the CBRS LTE connectivity. I know uh, more devices, more cameras will be coming down the road, especially with 5G, uh, which is pre-integrated to the camera. But right now, with this gateway solution, we have no limitation essentially, right? All these deployments can uh, get going with those gateways. Now, you also show a, sort of a device level uh, granularity here uh, where you've mapped a phone to the voice QCI, for example, in the Salona AP. Do you envision that being a per device classification or do you envision that being individual applications on a device also having some level of fidelity from a tagging perspective so that my Clash of Clans isn't marked as competing with my FaceTime calls from the same device? Yeah, both. Actually, great question, Sam. Uh, we, the, the granularity of microslice is per application level. So you can have multiple applications running on your device, and those applications can go over different microslices. So that if you have your uh, Zoom session or WebEx session, whatever, that you want to have higher quality of service compared to your you know, email and other traffic on the device, they can go over different microslices. Now, uh, having said that, there is a device aspect to this. I mean, a bunch of devices support this. On the network, we definitely support this. On the device side and in full transparency, some devices are ahead of others and I will come to that. And over the coming weeks and months, we, we see that becoming more and more normal uh, kind of uh, standard mode of operation. But there, there are a bunch of devices we do that already and more devices will be coming. And of course, you can always have different device groups with different applications. That's, that's a more standard case for us, for example, for IP cameras or AGVs and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other aspect that I'm gonna talk about uh, on the cellular edge is how it enables scaling, right? The scaling concept is, is used a lot and I would like to explain this uh, very clearly in our case, because uh, it's, it's, it's really very powerful. First of all, uh, I wanna explain the scaling at the level of nodes, right? So customers can start their deployments first with a small cluster with few nodes, and then they can grow the cluster with more nodes over time to put, you know, to get additional resiliency or maybe for additional traffic. So. This is service scaling on the uh, Celona edge that's maybe triggered due to traffic load or device count increase over time. But the second aspect that's very uh, crucial is how we efficiently utilize these resources on each node in a cluster, right? And essentially what we do is per IP domain or microslice, we assign network compute and memory resources. And then the solution scales these resources individually per micro slice. For example, you assume you have two different device groups. In this case, a simple scenario where each device group has uh, one set of applications. Maybe one device group is IP cameras uh, with uh, guaranteed five megabits per second uplink throughput. And another device group may be push to talk devices with voice services that are much lower bandwidth and which require uh, much lower utilization of the edge resources. So if you simply look at the total number of devices and allocated the resources accordingly, then you will be way off, right? Because the requirements of a PTT device will be much less on the edge. 
Instead, what we do is we scale the allocation of resources separately for each of these micro slices or device groups according to the needs of that specific micro slice. And this also gives us the ability to prioritize some device groups or micro slices with higher priority over the other ones. So if for some reason, whatever reason, you run out of capacity on the edge, you can always ensure that higher priority traffic uh, micro slices are always handled. I will uh, get into a, a device discussion and uh, this kind of things came up uh, in the earlier part of the presentation. Of course, this is a very important topic and what we are look, uh, seeing on the device side is that uh, there's a really trend uh, forming where more critical applications are getting converged on a single platform. Here we picked one example, the Samsung Galaxy X-Cover Pro. And this is a ruggedized Android smartphone designed for uh, enterprise use cases. And there are a number of enhancements uh, in this device that we can highlight, right? Uh, it's essentially a uh, platform which carries a lot of applications such as uh, having a programmable side button, which is excellent for PTT applications. And uh, there's also Office 365, Microsoft, Microsoft Teams, uh, is going to be announced soon to support that uh, PTT. And also this device allows the data transfer to be active on Wi-Fi and CBRS simultaneously. So the device can be configured to prefer LTE for specific applications, for example, uh, VoIP or PTT applications or some uh, real-time conversation applications. And uh, other background traffic can be carried over Wi-Fi. So we see many other smartphones and tablets going in this direction as well. And um, another enhancement we see on the devices is in terms of uh, system selection. For example, today, Pixel smartphones on a Google Fi network can make use of the geolocation information to trigger the search and selection of the most suitable network at any given location. And this also uh, helps with the seamless uh, transition of services as the devices move in and out of the enterprise. And uh, across other devices, we see similar trends as well over the next months uh, coming down the road. Of course, as the devices get smarter, the network infrastructure needs to get smart as well to complement this best system selection capability uh, for the devices. And this is an uh, area of future evolution for us as well. Any questions, comments on the edge? Um, quick question. When you talk about Wi-Fi and CBRS um, uh, simultaneously, um, is it possible to do the model that they've been talking about putting on my control traffic over CBRS and then putting my data traffic over Wi-Fi or is that something down the road? Yeah, when you say control traffic, Avril, you mean uh, applications requiring uh, like some control applications or? Things like call setup, handover, um, that sort of control traffic, any signaling traffic, and then put all my data onto Wi-Fi, because that's what they're talking about, the big advantage of integrating a service provider's network with Wi-Fi. And I'm just wondering if an enterprise could do it you know, um, have the same advantage we're using the CBRS spectrum. So there, I mean, license assistant access is, is still using, uh, you know, LTE, but there are two, two channels, right? One is the license spectrum channel, which is they call anchor. And then it can leverage the unlicensed spectrum, such as five gigahertz to enhance the throughput. Mm. So, um, yeah, so that one, uh, happened in the LTE space uh, early on, and now there's an evolution of it in the 5G world as well. And in the 5G world, uh, there are this, the same kind of uh, license assistance, assisted access is there, but there's also the standalone version of running 5G radio as a standalone network, only in the unlicensed spectrum, such as six gigahertz. Mm. So that's, that's another trend and uh, Honestly, the devices uh, will take some time. You don't expect to see them uh, very soon with that standalone 5G, but uh, it will be coming maybe, you know, uh, in 22 kind of time frame. But that's, that's more of an evolution path, I would say, to supplement the capacity uh, by leveraging the unlicensed spectrum. 